This is not your average piece of beef. No, this is feral. Maybe wild bovine. Got her cow? Oh. Yeah. What's my advice? Don't run in a straight line. Ooh. And I'm here in Los Alamos with Eric Peterson and Cody Farian yep. to get that cow and any others off the range. I didn't let that one hook you. Don't let her hook me now. Yes, sir. That wouldn't be playing fair. Around the tree. I'll outline all the specifics in a bit, but for now, I need to focus on my footwork. So that's just kind of a snapshot, day in the life of a feral cow wrangler. When I think of wildlife in New Mexico, I think mule deer, elk, mountain lions, not cattle. But it turns out there are generations of wild cattle on this sensitive landscape, and there are only two options to remove them, the cowboy or the helicopter. down here is we're, we're rounding up wild cattle and I've inter been interchanging like wild and feral right and uh, like the definition of that is like a feral would be something that's branded and is just wandering around but I just learned that that these cattle for example you guys caught earlier in the week and these would be wild cattle right like they're no brands correct and these cattle have been caught for quite a while, and that's why they're acting the way they are. This isn't the expectation I should go into. Like, w w these guys are acting a little bit more docile than what we might find up in the hills. That's a fact. Yeah, and we're kind of at the bottom of the barrel now. So w Would you say it's like, <laughs> like a pressured elk unit? Yeah, exactly. But where the elk run away, these run to you. Like looking to be fed? Like looking to hook your ass. Okay. Can you define hook your ass for me? <laughs> <laughs> Looking to uh, come and run through you. They're gonna do everything they can to get away from you or to kill you, so. Okay. And that public safety aspect's probably a big, big reason for- That's correct. Rounding these cattle up. We've had multiple vehicular collisions as well where cattle have wandered onto the road and have been struck by commuters coming up in the morning. So um, that prompted myself and others in the county to, to find someone that was professional to come out and catch these wild cattle and, and here we are. How do you want me to figure into all this? Um, I think we're just gonna all kind of group up and you'll just stick with me and then when I run, you run and when I climb, you climb. All right, <laughs> sounds good. literally hunting cattle right now. Cattle don't want to be found. We're trying to find sign, cut track, use the dogs to pick up the scent, and eventually flush them into a spot where we can catch them. This is my buddy Cody Farian, a professional feral cattle wrangler, and the man who hired him, Eric Peterson, an open space specialist for Los Alamos County. Removing cattle helps the landscape rebound from overgrazing and erosion. It also makes it much safer for the hiking public. They doing good? Capturing these cows requires a specific set of skills. Take a breather here. A cross between big game hunting and wrangling, old school and new. Eric often flies a drone to spot where the cattle are headed Cody employs horses, ATVs, and dogs to find and capture the animals. I mean, there's herding dogs for cattle, but you know, the, the idea of these things like striking cattle, like you would a, a wild cat, is pretty darn new to me. Like, how'd you come across that? It's just, it, they take it up so well that it's, it's easy to teach one of these dogs to like rig for cattle. <laughs> You know, 
They'll bay them up, which is circling and barking, and if one tries to leave the bunch, they might bite a bit to get it back in the bunch. But for the most part, if, if the cattle cooperate, they're pretty easy on them. Now, if they're rank cattle and rough cattle and they're rough on them, these dogs can get a little rough. Okay. I mean, if they're gonna get beat up, they're gonna, they'll throw punches back. Okay, got it. And the sweetness just comes from you. Of course. Got it, got it. I'm struck by how familiar this is. These cattle feel the pressure of the hunt and become harder and harder to find. But they couldn't escape the drone. All right, so we just load everybody back up. We got cattle spotted. Probably some that we booted off the top. We're gonna load into the side-by-sides and uh, grab a couple of dogs and head up and see if we can kind of get these ones on foot. Cody puts GPS collars on the dogs to keep track of them over this broken landscape. We'll just hit the rim and then uh, the dogs will probably take them from there. And then when we get in tight, probably just be one or two of us in and uh, go in on the bay and get them sedated and then get them tied to some trees. All right. Sounds good. And don't run in a straight line. Don't run in a straight line, climb things. That's what I've heard. Sound right? Dynamite. Okay, cool. Cool. Following you. Let's go. Things escalated quickly. The dogs hit fresh scent, took off, and immediately bathed the cow and calf. <laughs> And Cody goes to work with the dart gun, considering that the incorrect amount of sedative could result in a dangerous cow or a dead one, that's a real skill. Obviously that happened real fast. Happens pretty quick. So mom was in there doing her job, right. kind of defending that calf in the shade. Yes, sir. And then just kind of take advantage of that situation and slide in there and get your shots. Yeah. You have to get in there quick when the dogs are busy on them and she's working them, you know, like she was, uh -huh. trying to hook the dogs away. And then that little old poke in them, they don't even realize it and you automatically call your game, your dogs off, and then everything's cool, and they'll just, we got a time on them, so we're gonna wait till it takes full effect, and yeah. we're gonna lay them down right by that tree. Yeah, I mean, so far way different than I imagined, right? This wasn't like some yeah. crazy dog fight no. uh, on, in this instance, right? Absolutely, and there, it's like that, you know, like I was telling you the other day, it's, uh, you know, yeah. dogs, if they have a good solid bay, it's just good business. No harm, no foul, and all the cattle get caught. Got it. Cody secures the pair in the shade. So these guys, when when will they start coming around? Come off around. that uh, off that sedative. Um, it'll take probably two to three hours for them to come to full contact. You know, they'll be up on their wheels. You know, probably in another forty-five minutes or so. Okay. But it's it's a good method because then you can get away from them and they wake up and. They don't really know what happened. They don't know there's, this is all going on. They wake up next to that tree and what the whole deal is with tying them to the tree and whatever, it gets them somewhat halter broke, like, you know, breaking a, a, a young horse to a halter or something, some give to it. So when we do come back in here with horses, you know, she has a little bit of respect of uh, what that thing is around her neck. And, Cause she's gonna be mad. She's gonna try and hook horses and do mean and nasty things to us. But it's a step in the right direction as far as being able to manage these somehow, some way. Most definitely, yeah. Okay. Now that the sedative is worn off, we head up the mountain to gather the pair. Lots of obstacles. 
an important note here is these cattle do not herd like their domestic counterparts. They either never had that instinct or they lost it. Take two steps to him, cow. It worked. So the safest option for the cattle is to get them loaded onto a truck or into a trailer as soon as possible. It's like get, get your drunk buddy up on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Your big drunk buddy. All right. Holy cats. So this would be like a high dollar day at the sale barn. Right? Yeah, that's a pretty good little ticket because what they'll do, they'll process him meaning they'll probably castrate him, vaccinate him, and then he'll go into a feeder program on like good summer grass someplace coming up, and then he'll be fattened through the summer and sold in the fall and then finished at probably a feed yard and yeah. take sandwiches. Additionally, many of these cattle are in poor condition. You got her, cow? Yeah. What's my advice? Don't run in a straight line. Yes, sir. Cody determines that the cow won't handle the stress of removal okay. from this spot. Pull her tail this way, cow. As hard you. as you can, this way, hard. Hard. Ah. This way, around the tree. We know she wants to be ah. let go, but she doesn't want to let Cody get his cow catching gear back. That cow's unhooked from her lead rope there. And she's locked on to Cody right now. There's a lot of reasons not to mess with these cattle out here. But all of those reasons are for human safety. What Cody's doing, what Eric's doing, it's not safe. They're definitely like high risk occupation out here. The only real reasons to get these animals off the landscape is the fact that we put them out here and they do mess with these ecosystems. So we let her go with the idea that we can catch her again closer to a road. I expected ignorantly to see cattle that I'm familiar with. Instead, these feral or wild beeves were rank. They don't know they are cattle meant to be herded and many of them looked sick and beaten. Enough to make me wonder if winter would take care of the issue. The range was obviously stressed from those that had overstayed their welcome, and despite this country being great for elk, I never spotted one. On top of that, there it this is. job is dangerous. Enough for me to think shooting these cattle from a helicopter and letting the beef go to waste is more than justified. Regardless, people like Cody and Eric are rounding them up, carting them off. And why? Well, because nobody else would. Okay, in the state of New Mexico, unbranded cattle, wild cattle, or mavericks, belong to the state of New Mexico. Unless they get identified, they get identified by a brand inspector. State brand inspector just showed up. These wild cattle that we've been catching, Cody's been catching, Eric's been catching, uh, they get held until the brand inspector shows up, takes them off their hands. He does an inspection of the beef. If there's no markings, they go to the sale barn, and away they go to the highest bidder. We're gonna go watch this bull that we caught the other day gets loaded into brand inspector's trailer and sent down the road.
just another day on the, on the job. Another day. <laughs> another day. Yeah. Cody always makes it interesting. <laughs> well, what do you think of this uh, operation down here? They're doing really well. Uh, as far as like the, the problems with the wild cattle, what, what would be like the number one concern from your perspective? Right now, because we've got a real bad problem with trichomoniasis, which is a, a breeding problem with cattle. And there's so many bulls up here, and we have had trick up here in this area. So we kind of suspect it could be coming from these feral bulls. Oh, so you're, you're seeing like a disease issue <clears throat> yes. from hem wild cattle on the range that yes. they're not getting doctored? Yes, they're, they're not they're... being doctored in any way, so there is a possibility that they could carry and Got transmit it. to domestic herds that would create a huge economic impact. Yeah, I will call you All right. next day or two. I'll be back. All right, I'll be back. Thank you. It's a pleasure meeting you. It's Thanks a pleasure. for talking to us. You bet. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, if you're a good livestock manager or land manager, you're going to be managing everything together as an ecological system because one thing always impacts another. So that's one of the issues with feral livestock is they're not managed. They're, they're doing whatever they want and they aren't being removed to allow periods of rest. They aren't being removed when people have to make decisions due to drought or other impacts. Um, so it's really important to be able to gather, gather herds entirely so that you have actual full rest periods for ecosystems to recover and come back and actually be more productive and usable in the future for livestock and wildlife and recreation and all the, all the things that use these systems. Uh, one of the things from a hunting perspective that I always think about is with these cattle on the ground so much, what's the impact on mule deer and elk and the things that I occupy my time with? Elk herds and deer herds, they might avoid certain areas because of the impact that cattle are having on that location. Um, and that can change your ability to hunt them. Right. <laughs> right, we, we, elk are already hard enough to catch, you know? <laughs> Just like elk hunting, we start high and early and glass our game. See those pinyon trees? Yeah. The one with the arm coming out? Right above it. I think we've got. Yeah. Yep, I think we've got two. Oh, yeah. The cattle we spot are close to a good road, so Cody and his team fly into action. Side note, Cody Farian does everything fast. So fast, we barely had time to capture the action. All in all, I honestly can't believe how much effort goes into this job. Okay. Yeah, got to, got to come to me. Hey. 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 The danger. The manpower, the isolation, on, it takes a special yep. person with a very specific skill set to get the job done. You got the back, we got the front, you can't hook us. And to answer the pay question, well, there is no retirement plan. Black, black. This experience really makes you think about what goes into the price of beef at the store. I think we're good. Especially once you, they feel something odd, then they come alive. You know, just like that. I do know that there's folks out there that say just leave these cattle be. Correct. But, and when you look at like the amount of effort that goes into getting them off the range and, and certainly the risk involved, why, uh, why are you so motivated to get these things out of here? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, man, this, this has been a problem, like I mentioned earlier, for 10, 15, 20 years, and no one has really taken initiative to champion something like this and uh, we've got a lot of conflicts with cattle being on the landscape. They've ruined um, habitat for native species, they've trampled through cultural sites that are federally protected. No one comes and collects them. They live on the range year-round. You probably don't have like a lot of sensitivity 
to cattle when you start talking about endangered species with a lot of people. Exactly, right? exactly. I've got to go back and educate them why why we want to take these cattle off, why it's important for the ecosystem, and, and they always want to know where they go to. So trying to explain to the public um, a safely and humane way of doing this has really won over the community, and they've really supported this operation. All right, gentlemen. <laughs> and that is like a great thing to keep in mind, right? Like there's no question this is stressful on these animals. If they had a choice, they wouldn't choose to spend their day this way. That's right? correct, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> uh, for these kind of holdouts out here where it is so hard to get to and the, and the, the human risk involved is so high, mm -hmm. like the other option left on the table is just shooting them and leaving them alive. That's right? correct, yeah. Aerial yeah. termination or, or hiring a government contract to come out here and, and terminate the cattle and, and usually leave them on the landscape is what has been done in the past. I hope this look into this operation didn't spoil the romanticism of the cowboy in the West. He's going to be upset when he wakes up. Very. <laughs> I'd be. I wouldn't blame him at all. So is this a uh, successful operation? I would say so. What do you think, Mr. Peterson? I do, yes. Right, you're starting, it's not like a random gig. You're starting to see some efficiencies. Repetition and efficiency, right? Yeah. You see the, the trend since you guys have been here, kind of the methods that we use. It's forceful by yeah. nature, and that's a lot of manpower, but yeah, it usually gets the animal to where it needs to go in the end. It really brings out like my biggest question this whole operation is is why the hell do you do it, Cody? Keeps you going. It's exciting. It's a it's a it's a it's a challenge. Yeah, I mean you figured you know? out a way to turn your uh, the your love of hunting with dogs into uh, you know, it's another part of your profession now. Right. But it's a lot like hunting, as you see. Like, you have to, you know, it's it's hunting. Oh, it is hunting. It's not really cowboying. You know, sure, there's aspects of cowboying that comes into catching wild cattle, but you're a hunter. You're a wild cow. You're a wild bull man. A wild cow hunter, you know. And then I think if you could master that, I mean, you know, you... you you chase lions, like I've hunted lions 15, 20 years and, you know, cowboyed and, and then you chased elk, you know, 20, 30 years. And then when you, when you put all them things together and then chase an animal like a bovine that's been trained or wild or been, you know, messed with before and chased and harassed. When you succeed in catching that animal, when everybody else has failed, it makes a big old warm fuzzy feeling inside your body for sure. New Mexico has always been covered in big grazers, starting with Pleistocene horses and bison antiquus, then modern bison and herds of Spanish burros and horses. But the difference between then and now is, those animals were managed through predators or by humans who rounded them up for personal gain, including food. What I found here was a story of neglect. These cattle are generations from domestic, but they aren't fat and happy wild things. They show signs of inbreeding, malnourishment, disease, and they are hard as hell on the landscape. The best medicine is prevention. Until then, we should be thankful for people like Cody and Eric.